Um, now I will show that I have only two more slides. I will show two processes um, in which we have implemented all this philosophy. One of them is an antibody process. We inoculate the cells with three times 10 to five cells per mill. Very normal. Cells grow high to 2.5 times 10 to seven, which is, I would say, for fat batch, very high. I have forgotten to say that um, fat batch versus um, against uh, perfusion. Uh, I don't want to do this discussion because I, be, it, I think it is obvious that fat batch is easier. However, we are discussing about the modus of fat batch, how to run the fat batch so that it is really scalable and easy. Therefore, all processes which we run are very simple fat batch. And then uh, cells produce eight gram per liter of antibody and the product uh, and the viability drops down to 50%. Now the process, uh, first of all, the good news, high titer. We all like to listen, high titer. But the bad news, long process. Uh, the product quality might not be perfect. Therefore, if the product quality is not perfect there, maybe we should cut the process there, stop there or there, whatever. Now, how complicated is this process? After inoculation, the first three days, we don't do anything. At day three, we add our feed. This continuous addition, within 15 minutes, we turn off the wave, put the feed, turn, uh, turn on and off, and that's it, and go home. Come the next day, take the sample, add the same amount of feed. That is important. The same amount of feed. In many fat patches, the feeding uh, is so that you uh, increase the feeding amount during the time because your volume increases, because also the cells grow higher. But we keep it constant. The day after, you come, take sample, count the cells, add your feed, the same feed always. It is connected on your bioreactor and it is not in a refrigerator, very important. In 10,000 liter, you don't have big refrigerator for your feed. Add feed in 15 minutes, go home, and you do 21 days long. There is no, no change on uh, process conditions like temperature, whatsoever. Now that is one example for discontinuous feeding, and here uh, another example for continuous feeding, we inoculate the cells higher, and the cells grow to 2.5 times 10 to 7, again to the same final cell concentration. And the cell viability seems to be a bit maybe higher, 60% or whatever, in the end of the process. And the product concentration is 11 gram per liter. Now, the good news by this process is the product concentration is high. We all like it. Another good news is in a short process time. That is important. It is not three weeks process anymore. <coughs> For me, the best news in this process is the simplicity. After inoculation, we calculate the amount of feed, how much we should give. We adjust the pump and turn on. Continuously, the pump feed us the needed amount of feed. That is at day zero, and then we go home. After 15 days, we come back and harvest. <laughs> I mean, I have to exaggerate a bit. There is nothing to change on the process. That means I am saying actually the contrary uh, things compared to yesterday. We don't need CO2 or oxygen uptake rate or viability or whatever. It is possible to design a process for process design, we need well-experienced people and always thinking on large scale and making a simple process and transfer this simple process to large scale and then not discuss to KLA anymore. That is actually the key message. So what happens if it fails? How are you going to know what you're doing? Sorry? If it fails, how are you going to know what you're doing? If the process fails, yeah. for some reason you're not monitoring. Yeah, very good question. You know,